I'm with Lee, he's a professional piano, my piano tuner. He's gonna go over with me the Kohler Campbell. So I was telling you that the Kohler and Campbell piano was actually built by the Samick Piano Company out of Incheon, Korea. And the parts are from all around the world. Even though Samick owns it and they're out of Korea, the piano is actually assembled in Indonesia. So the rim assembly, the part around the outer, which you see, this part, is all, this is actually made in Korea. The cast iron plate is made at the foundry in Korea. All these components get shipped down to Indonesia and they finish off the cabinet with the veneers and the legs because, you know, there's a lot of wood in Indonesia. There's not much wood in Korea. <laughs> so, the rim assembly, those are special woods that they actually have to buy from North America and have shipped over to make the, the rim assembly with. So, all, you know, like I say, all of these different components come from different parts of the world. Now, the part that has most of the moving parts is this thing, which is called the action. So, you got 88 keys, 88 hammers. This piece is called the whipping or the repetition two words for the same piece and within this assembly there are about 7,000 moving Whoa. parts. So this piece is called the flange and there's a little pin that runs through there and that holds this in place. It runs through this piece which is screwed down and it's it moves on the pin and around the pin there's a piece of uh, felt which is made out of wool and if the wool you know like all wool if it gets wet it just blows up it swells and what happens is the uh, the pin that's supposed to move inside that uh, felt bushing gets bound up and it doesn't move like it's supposed to and that's the pin and they come in different sizes you know from 18 all the way up to 26 and they're different so usually in new pianos they're about a 22 or 20 22 and a half and that pin runs through there and it's inside that felt and the pin actually spins when this moves right the pin is the pivoting pivoting but if that felt is damp it won't move so how many of these do we have we have one here we have one here, that's two. There's one there, that's three. There's one down here at the jack, that's four. And then back inside the piano where the dampers live, there's another one. That's the fifth there's one. There's more inside. Inside, here. yeah. Inside. Just back up under there. Please. Well, you get, you get the yeah. idea. So when they, if any of them bind, you know, the hammer sometimes can go up and just kind of float back down. So when you're trying to play the note fast, it won't oh, play because it hasn't come back yet. Hasn't come back yet. Or if the jack pops out and doesn't go back, see, it's supposed to just pop right back. Right, in right, place. right, right. If it doesn't pop back, then the knuckle jack uh, binds up and it won't re repeat. Or if this one, you know, goes up and it's kind of floating back down, it'll slow down the whole mechanism. Oh. So these have to stay dry. So the relative humidity uh, suggested by piano man manufacturers is between 45 and 55 okay. percent, which is tough in Hawaii because right. our relative humidity is always above 55 percent. So one of the inherent problems that this company had was when this piano was built, Samick at that time was the second largest piano manufacturer. Wow. They were pumping out, you know, over 200,000 pianos a year. Oh. So what happened was rushing through the process, uh -huh. and they were actually putting wood in the pianos that hadn't really been cured. Oh. So there was kind of green wood, and green wood has moisture in it, so that exacerbated the problem. Well. We've gotten to a point now, you can see all of this is pretty... Oh, it's dry. It's dry now. So that part, part is gone. But there was a period of time when 
that's what our problem was. Oh. So I, you know, would occasionally repin these one at a time. But you know, they're, you know, we've, I've already told you there are five of them. Five. Pins right. Five pins in each. Times times eighty eight or ninety. Right. So that's a lot. That's four hundred and fifty. Right. Of these things, so <laughs> you, know, you had to go through and repin the whole All thing. It took forever. Horrible. So what we always tried to do was lubricate. Okay. So there's a solution called Protec, uh -huh. which was developed specifically for these components, these okay. parts. And what it does is it, it has a twofold purpose. It lubricates the pin. Because sometimes when these things would get wet, you know, around the, because of the felt, right. a little piece of, um, like, mold would build up on it, which they call vertigris. Okay. And the vertigris would um, would also, you know, it's kind of like sandpaper on there. So it would slow it down even more. Wow. Well, this stuff would break down the vertigris. Oh, awesome. And it also, when it evaporated, it would cause the, the uh, felt to shrink. So it had... And it dual purposes. A dual purpose. And it works really well. Awesome. So... But you got to lubricate 450 of them. Oh, well, that's easy. I mean, because, you know, look at this. This is how you do it. I've got this full of lubricant now. So I just go down the whole thing like this. Right at that joint. Oh, I see. And that's hitting both sides of that. So there's a, a felt bushing on both sides. I'm usually pretty generous with it. Although it costs $60 a quart. <laughs> oh. And that will pretty much resolve the problem oh. now. For now. For now. But now that the wood has kind of dried out, I think what we're probably running into now is a little bit of vertigris. So I'm going to lubricate again. I came prepared to do repinning if it was still green, but it's not green anymore. Okay. You can see they've, they've yeah. pretty much cured. Yeah. When you looked at it the last time, did you see any green? Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, really. But I mean, this is this is all white wood now. Mm -hmm. But it, it, you know, it, it it wouldn't be green. It just wouldn't all be this white. I see. And that's, but you know, now it's pretty white. Yeah, it's really white, like bone white. Yeah, and that's good. And the drier you get the room, the drier this is. Going right, to right. The the other one, the other. I just got this new media, seventy pint dehumidifier, so. It's gonna do its job and keep this room nice and so dry. You know, and for you know, when you get into how this performs, you know, there are actually about fifteen adjustments for each key. The key has to sit two and a half inches off the key bed, it has to travel, you know, have a, a key dip block that tells you how far down the key is supposed to go to make sure that it's not traveling oh. too far. The hammer is supposed to sit two and a half inches from the string. The, a sixteenth of an inch from the string is supposed to let off. It's supposed to drop a sixteenth. The repetition spring is supposed to give a little jump, like that does. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there are all of these adjustments right, right. that you have to go in and make. But, right. you know, the piano is pretty well regulated, and everything is... I've always found it to function properly, except for the, the sluggishness and stickiness. Also, you see right in here, there's more felt. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, see, this is the guide pin. This is right at the fulcrum point. And then there's another one underneath here. You can see yeah, that. Yeah, I see that. And this keeps the key going straight down. Down, yeah. And that, if those swell up, then the key stick can get sluggish. Everything else could be fine, and but the key stick is stuck down. Oh. It's slowly coming back up. So, you know, there's so, so many. many things that you got to look out for. But right now, you think it's it's these that are, are the problem? Well, I, you know, like I said, usually when I show up, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> I went through the whole piano, the whole action, and I can't find anything sticking right now. Okay. But I'm not going to just believe that. Right. I'm going to lubricate, lubricate all the yeah. points. Yeah. And hopefully that'll resolve, especially since you got the new dehumidifier. Right, right, right. right. And, just came you know, in. we'll just see how it goes. But, you know, it's not that your piano is any different or any unique from other pianos. They all have this problem. Wow. From the $100,000 Steinway 
Because they all work the same way. They all work the same way. Yeah. And if they get, you know, if these parts get damp, it slows down. Wow. So. So this this is the key right here. My yeah. Now, you know, there's another thing. device. I mean, I think I told you about called an air dryer. And you can go online. That's the one that I suggest. Air dryer? You, you get that in addition to that. Oh, yeah. And it looks like a, it's an oval uh -huh. appliance. It has no moving parts. You don't have to empty the water. And all it does is dry the air. How does it do that, though? I don't know how it works. <laughs> but the air kind of goes through it. Uh -huh. And it and it dries the air. Wow. And what you'd want to do is, because you have carpet, you'd want to get like a big piece of ceramic tile. Throw that on the floor. Set this on top of it, underneath the piano, and I'll guarantee you it'll get rid of the problem. Maybe oh, okay. Maybe I'll, I'll, get, I'll go ahead and get that. Maybe, is that my phone? Yeah, I think so. I don't know, some kind of a text message, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm here with Lee, and uh, he just explained Hello. to me the whole thing. I didn't know. I just thought there hey, was some going? kind of a pivot in there, but. Obviously, there's much more to that than um, I can see. It's just family. absolutely amazing, uh, the knowledge that oh, this gentleman yeah. has. So Lee is doing a systems check of the piano. And making sure everything is okay. It's awesome.